and we're back. Welcome back to the Wayward Saga. I'm Jason. This is Mary. Hey. And this week we travel to the Cotswolds from Cornwall. A gorgeous drive through Bath and Somerset, beautiful little country lanes and hedgerows. Still terrifying drivers. Haven't gotten used to England and driving here at all yet, which is another adventure for a different time. Um, but this week we're going to talk about a few different villages that we visited and stayed in. We've been here for about three weeks now. Um, and it's just a really pretty place. It's your sort of quintessential England, little small villages, limestone brick is the signature of the Cotswold region. Um, and we're going to take you through it. We've got a few videos and let's check it out. Okay, so this is Castle Coombe. It was the first village that we went to, and it's a really pretty area. Uh, your typical Cotswoldian area with all the limestone. Um, it, it's basically called Castle Coombe because there was actually once a castle here. It was built in the 1300s, but it's been long since demolished and forgotten, and just the name is what remains. Um, Basically, no new houses have actually been built here since the 1600s, and that, that'll be a kind of a recurring theme throughout the Cotswolds. Just really old, beautiful, medieval-styled homes uh, with that limestone brick. And what's really cool about this area, too, is that there was a lot of Roman occupation. So you'll, you'll see signs for it, um, ancient Roman ruins, and so the region was sort of established by, that, the, by the Romans. And this is our trusty steed, Brokenante. It's taken us all over the country, from Scotland, all the way down to England, and maybe beyond. We'll see what happens. And then we go into to Byberry. Byberry is, is, is well, well known as probably the prettiest Cotswoldian village. I think it also was rated as the best village in the UK um, at one point. It's just a, a really pretty area small, tiny. There's a trout farm, which is really cool. I love trout. Um, there's a lot of old buildings. Uh, a cool fact about Byberry is that the Emperor of Japan actually stayed here in 1920, before World War II, and loved it. Stayed at the Swan Hotel, uh, which is a place that we've spent a lot of time in in the last couple of weeks. Um, you'll see Arlington Row. Arlington Row is this really cool, rickety, sort of cottage row that people still live in, uh, I found out, the hard way. <laughs> um, and a, once again, a lot of, a lot of different TV and, and movies were filmed here. Uh, everything from, you know, Jane Austen films to recent, you know, flicks like Downton Abbey and Lark Rise to Candleford, I think, had even some filming done in the Cotswolds. And Byberry is sort of the center of that. A lot of tourists come here too, so if you are coming to Byberry, to check out Arlington Row and the small little village area. It's incredibly crowded during the day, so get there as early as possible if you want that Instagram footage. That's the tip for you. We went at like 6 a.m. Yeah, we went at like it 6 a.m. And, and there was no one, but... Absolutely no one. You can actually find parking. If you get there after 8, it's brutal. Honestly, there's just hordes of tourists from every corner of the world. Um, and it can be a pain in that sense. The Cotswolds are one of the more frequented regions of England, so you'll come across difficulty to park, uh, and a, a lot of a lot of people all over the place, especially in the summertime. And here we are in the beautiful little hamlet of Byberry. It's in the Cotswolds, and this is this small, strange cottage row, and it's fantastic.
And then we're on to Fairford. Fairford is actually where we've been staying. That we've been in is this beautiful little 17th century house for the last two and a half, three weeks. Um, it's near an, an Air Force base, so there's actually been a lot of like U.S. servicemen that we've met in the local pubs here, which has been kind of nice. And it's just a really pretty little quiet village. It's off the beaten track, kind of, so you won't see as many people here as you would in, say, Byberry or Castle Coombe or Burton on the Water. And it, it's just a great little place. The, the meadow that we walk through is just this gorgeous pasture essentially that there's a public footpath through and you can walk into the forest from there and along a riverbank and we'll have some more footage about that and, and possibly next week. And uh, yeah, I mean all in all the Cotswolds are just a phenomenal place. Jane Austen um, wrote Mansfield Park in a town not far from here. Uh, I'm a big Jane Austen fan and this whole region is just rich in literary history you'll see all kinds of, of, uh, of references to, to you know, various texts and, and tomes and doomsday books and all kinds of fun things. And it's just, it's, it's like one of those bucolic regions that you, you see on TV, that you read about. It's, it's really nice, it's very crowded in the summertime, so be prepared for that. And once again, uh, tiny little roads going everywhere. Um, but it's an adventure. There's lots of different walkways, different paths that you can take, uh, and all of them are connected. So you can actually walk from village to village on the Cotswolds Way, which is something we'd like to check out maybe at a later time. Come on, let's go.
it's great. It's really nice here, and we're happy to be here. We won't be here for much longer. Um, we'll move on to some other location after this. And that sort of leads me into talking about how we do this. We get this question all the time from family and friends and from people that we meet on, on the road. How are we doing this? How are we able to afford this? Are we privately wealthy? Do we work one of those really obscure remote jobs that no one really understands? And the answer, to, to put it shortly, is no, we, we, we aren't privately wealthy. We're actually broke 90% of the time, including right now. <laughs> Um, and we just go, we just do it. We've been doing this for a long time. Um, when we went to Australia, when we lived in Australia almost 10 years ago, we, we flew there with $200 in our pocket and just made it work. And it's difficult, it's not easy. Um, and at times it can be really uncomfortable. So the answer is simply how we do this is we're, we're not even sure, we're still figuring it out. The point is, is that we just want to do it and we want to travel, we want to see the world and we're not going to let resources you know, get in our way, or the lack of resources, rather, and that's generally where we're at. Um, and that also kind of speaks to how we're so volatile and why we move so fast or so quickly. Really, we just take whatever opportunity comes our way, and sometimes that'll mean that we have to leave a place uh, fairly quickly to get to the next destination, to make a little bit of money so that we can kind of move on. Um, when we left Scotland, that was kind of a little bit of a shock because we weren't expecting that job that I had up there to end so quickly and so we've just really had to think on our feet and just sort of take the next opportunity. So I'll often work temp jobs. Right now because we're in England, um, Mary can't work, I can because I'm a dual citizen, I have a British passport. Um, and so Mary's just sort of doing sort of her digital stuff that she does and I'm just trying to bartend and you know I'll work agriculture jobs, whatever we can do. Yeah. And it's, 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 it can be stressful. It's not all rainbows and sunshine, people. Um, it can be an absolute nightmare at times. We've slept in our car. We've camped. We've, you know, we've, we've done less than, than fun things to, to get to where we are. Um, but it's what you have to do. And, and that's what I think people should know about travel, about getting out there and doing it. There's going to be hiccups. There's going to be bumps in the road. But... It, if you're confident, if you're able to just have the courage to, to stick a step outside your comfort zone, you'll find that there's a lot of really beautiful things along the way, even if it is uncomfortable. And we're incredibly irresponsible. I'm sure some of you are watching this and just shaking your heads and saying, these guys are absolute maniacs. And you're probably right. We probably are totally crazy. But we like what we do, and because of what we do, we've been able to see a lot of the world, and, and that's that's been really important to us. So uh, let us know what you think. We'll have another week coming up where we do all kinds of fun things, a lot of hiking, um, and we'll really just see where we're headed next. We're not even sure. So if you have any suggestions, let us know. Um, and if you are like a rich heiress or some type of like benefactor that's out there that wants to just bestow us with your generosity, <laughs> we're happy to talk. So let us know and yeah. The Wayward Saga. Woohoo! Let's go. Okay, so that's our video for this week. I hope you guys liked it. And if you did like it, please like and subscribe because apparently that's what builds our YouTube empire. Um, and we're on our way to the top, folks. So don't miss out. Like and subscribe. And we'll see you next week. Bye! <laughs>